Hey everybody, DK here with Adventures in Dirt. Welcome back to another edition of Digger Spotlight. Hey, you know what? I took the month of March off. I didn't really do one in the month of March. Kind of took a break, but came back here in April, came on strong, and boy, we got a great guest lined up for you tonight, I'm telling you. Amazing, amazing person and personality within our metal detecting community. Can't wait to talk to him. But hey, if you're new here, the Digger Spotlight is a is a live stream show I put on a couple times a month where I bring you some notable diggers in our metal detecting community. I'll bring them on for a little one-on-one -on -one interview. We'll interact with the chat. We'll get to talk to people uh, in and out of the chat. So if you got a question, make sure you pay attention to the text that's running just below my face here. And if you can just start to type at Adventures in Dirt before you ask your question, that would be awesome. That will highlight it for me and help me uh, to identify you. Uh, that you have a question. I also have some moderators in, in, in the house, 5280 Adventures. Tony, thanks for coming. Hey, uh, so if you guys have a, a question that I'm not getting to, make sure you tap him and let him know what's going on. But I'm telling you, tonight's guest, uh, you may know him as Keebs, you may know him as Keebler, you may know him as Mr. Keebler, or you just might know him as Henry Moore. But like I said earlier in some of my promotions, we have all four with us tonight. Let me see if I can go over here and bring them in. Hey, Henry, how you doing? There's Henry. There he is. Check it out. Hey, babe. Yeah, I'll be uh, right after this interview. I'll, I'll help with the dishes. And then uh, Henry, we're we can, live. Uh, Henry, we're live. We, we, we can uh, we, we uh, can uh, get into the uh, re relaxation and recreation, uh, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Henry, we said we oh, were going to keep this clean. <laughs> Hey, you oh, have shoot. me on mute, right? You know, man, we were live. I'm sorry, Henry. We were live. <laughs> oh, sorry, everybody. I have to apologize about that. <laughs> little little technical difficulty. Uh, everybody, Henry Moore, Keebs, Keebler. Boy, what do you like to be called these days? Uh, Keebs seems to be the one. Keebs seems to be the one. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's easy. Uh, less letters. Easy for me to pronounce. I got that. We'll call yep. him Keebs. All right. Hey, uh, if you can see the chat, I'm going to pull mine up real quick and see if I can see who's in the uh, chat room already. We already have some great people coming in. Uh, looks like 5280 inches in there. Uh, Mr. Keebler, whoever that is, came in real early, uh, started passing <laughs> some ice cream around. That's awesome. I heard somebody's birthday today. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But, hey, Lincoln Central Coins and Dog is my co-pirate. Nathan, great to see you, man. Thanks for coming along and supporting the show. Really appreciate your support. Who do you see over there, Keebs? Oh, gosh. Uh, wow. From way down under. Diggers down under. Oh, my goodness. All the way from Australia. Yes, sir. Welcome, Neil. Thanks for coming on, bud. I appreciate you. Uh, uh, what time is it there? It's uh, early tomorrow. It's already tomorrow. Uh, over there, I believe it's uh, early. Dirt, just is dirt fishing. Hmm? Is he a time traveler as well? <laughs> He's a lot of things. I'll tell you that. I had I had him on this show. He is definitely a lot of things. Tin Cup Tim, great to see you. Finders oh, Keepers, yeah. wow, great great channel. Love to see you. Mudman Mike just uh, recently became uh, interested in your channel and started following you and watching some of your videos. Thanks, bud. Thanks for showing up. Who else you see there? Deej. Deej. Hi, Deej. <laughs> hey, Deej. Thanks for coming. I appreciate you guys all coming out and supporting the show. Sorry I missed uh, March. I kind of took the month of March off. You know, I do these a couple times a month. I don't really plan them, you know, too too stringently. I kind of like them to be little special events every time I pull them up. And it's great because I always pull, try to get out these great guests like I have tonight with Keebs here. Um, and everyone, warm up your voices. I know we won't be able to hear you, but we're all going to probably sing happy birthday to Keebs a little bit later. Uh, somebody told me that it's his birthday. That's what an mm -hmm. awesome. He decided to share his birthday with us. How, how, how blessed are we? Amazing. Uh, Excalibur 1010, good to see you. Digging with Deej, great. I'm glad you're here. Life and Times with Barney Taylor, bud. Thanks for supporting my channel. Appreciate it. Um, Charles Harley. Charles Harley. <laughs> Charlie Harley. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Great to see you. Thanks for coming in and supporting the show and saying hello. He's Howdy, from Dr. Detroit. Yeah. Dr. Detroit's in the house? Yeah. That sounds like a Excalibur, song. Excalibur, 1010. <laughs> That's right. Well, all right. Well, hey, Henry, thanks for showing up. Thanks for doing this with me. I appreciate you uh, spending your time with us, especially on your birthday, man. That's awesome. Um, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's start things off. And while, while I'm, while I'm asking Henry questions, why don't y'all, if you can answer the questions in chat about your own detecting channel or your own experience in the metal detecting community, 
feel free to do that. It starts a great conversations, and I always like to see that later when I'm watching the replay. That's always fun. But let's go back to the beginning. Um, why metal detecting? Like, why uh, why did that become uh, part of your life? Um, well, the the first very first time I I was introduced to uh, do you have music playing? I do not. I'm hearing music. Are you? Hold on a minute. I might. Yeah. I might. Uh, I might. I might. I might. Mm-hmm. Give me a second. Technical difficulties. Do I have music playing? Hmm. I do. Sorry about that. How about that? All right. That should have stopped it. We good? Not. Not yet. Tony, my buddy says he doesn't hear any music um, coming through the live feed. All right. Well, hmm. do you got music playing somewhere? Me? No. Hmm. 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 Let me see. Is <laughs> it Especially what I'm hearing. Is it really loud? It's like half your volume and it's like. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Holy cow. I don't see it. Um, let me see. I don't need that open. Hold on. I'll just double I, check here. Mm-hmm. Let me look at something here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Everyone pause with it just for a moment. Um, let me see. I don't have anything else open here. <clears throat> Hey, Tony, type in the chat, would you? Let me know if you're hearing any music coming across the uh, broadcast. I don't hear it in my ear in my earpiece. Um, <laughs> did you see that at the same time? <laughs> I did. <laughs> I, it's the voices in my head. They tell me that you forgot the. Right, you forgot. Well, you forgot to mute those. <laughs> yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll continue. I, I can. Yeah. I, as long as it's good music. But. Oh, I hope it is. I don't I don't show I have anything playing in the background. Nothing else open here. All right. Yeah. I wonder if it's the uh, program I'm using. Do they? They wouldn't throw stuff like that. An ad maybe? Is it like ad music? No, no. This is like a, a country song. And before that, it was like Dixie music. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And, all right. All mm-hmm. right. So, uh, your question: yeah. Why, how, and uh, my very first encounters with a, 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 a John Philip Sousa. We're losing him to the music in his head. <laughs> all right. I don't have any. So I don't weird. have anything playing, buddy. I don't at all. <laughs> it's gonna be coming. <laughs> I like this song. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, my my first detector was not called a metal detector. It was called a landmine Ooh. detector. Uh, about 74, 1974, when I was in the service, uh, they gave me one of those with a big, thick manual and had to learn it. That's it, huh? So, like, uh, was those, were those the big ones that you had to carry? And it was like a, like a big six foot uh, grid that you carried around, or the, uh, the pan? Yeah, uh, the pan was about the size, a little bit smaller than a trash can lid, hmm. and a, r- a really long pole that you could make even longer. Yeah, and uh, uh, the battery pack and everything. Yeah, yeah. Not a nervous so job. Was- not a nervous job at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, so did you just graduate yeah. from that to hey i like this uh when i get back stateside well gonna... you know uh going through a few classes with it and uh reading more i was like this is kind of cool you can find anything yeah and uh so fast forward like <clears throat> 10 years or so uh i picked up like a radio shack a radio shack model i think hmm. and uh Can you hear that? 
I put the butt up there. I can hear. Uh, yeah, I heard yeah, something. Yeah. Um, yeah, Radio Shack model, and uh, it was good. I mean, back then, everybody was just coin shooting on library lawns and everything. And, and believe me, back then, not abnormal to go out for an afternoon and have your pockets jam full of silver coins, old pennies. So that's what happened to him. You mean, you found them all. <laughs> yeah. Well, a lot of people around, around that era. Uh, you guys cleaned it out. Shoot. Just raked it in, I'll tell you. <laughs> now, dude, when you got started, was there many other people, you know, your friends, partners, uh, anybody around you that was doing it, or was it really I, more I of a... One, I knew one other guy. Yeah. Um, that lived and, around uh, you? Yeah. Yeah. And that was it. Yeah. For the and, longest time. So how long ago is this now? You're talking that you've been this that's eighties. Yeah. Wow. Um, so then you just kept graduating buying newer and newer machines as, as things uh, progressed and Oh uh, yeah. You know, I dropped out a little bit, you know, time, life decisions, um yeah. and uh kept bouncing back until what it has evolved into today. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So when did you uh when did you end up meeting Charlie and, and getting uh getting hooked up with him? Uh a little over five years ago. Yeah. Um because of the internet and everything, I was kinda interested, wanted to span out. Because believe me, I was like I was kinda burnt out from doing coin shooting on all these lawns and everything. Uh it was like more or less just shooting fish in a barrel i was looking for something different something more and i ran across his youtube channel he only had a half dozen maybe 12 videos up and he was out exploring with a thunder chief and i'll be darned i said i know where they are it's right down the road it's right down the road and uh um and I happened to see his name in a forum. And I typed, hey, uh, I live really close to you. Let's get together. And by ch and he, he himself said he never visited that forum ever. But that one day he did and saw my post and we made the connection. And history since then. That's it. Huh? Great. Yep. Well, it sounds like he's definitely a good person to hung up, hook up with. Now, was he filming yeah. automatically right away? Like he was always filming. You and so when you got into that, that was already going. Like you said, he already had twelve videos up or whatever, and it just kind of yeah. jumped yep. right into that. Yeah, and he had done uh, BMX <clears throat> racing prior to that, and he was doing you know the big whatever cameras you know the VHS. Things yeah, and, on your shoulder. So he, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he was doing that kind of thing. Even prior to that. Yeah, I found one of his old videos uh, back when he was uh, doing that that BMX. I forgot the name of his team now. It was Team something or other. But I did find some old videos. They're still out there if you go look for them. They're still out there to be, oh, wow. to be looked yeah. at. But, yeah, cool stuff. So the whole Keebler thing, um, was that something that you had before meeting Charlie? Or did that kind of come about with the whole Stealth Digger thing? The aliens gave me that name. <laughs> no, uh, we were doing this uh, 1700s house. Yeah. And there was this huge maple tree that had been all rotted out, but still had the spine. And it was still growing. And I, I got right inside. And uh, uh, just Bob went, ah, <laughs> Mr. Keebler, you know, because I was in there shaking everything around and it just stuck from there. <laughs> They wouldn't let they wouldn't let it they wouldn't let it lie, huh? That that just became it. <clears throat> That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I could yeah. picture it. You tell that story, I could picture it. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> so did, did everyone sort of start? Was that sort of a thing that as more and more people came, became associated with the stealth diggers, they got these little nicknames uh, pretty pretty quickly and indoctrinated, or <clears throat> is that kind of a rite of passage? Or <clears throat> well, I mean, kinda. It's kind of like the way Native Americans would name their children. After a, the personality trait, or you know, right. whatever happened right then and there, and that's 
that's how all those start. Yeah. Well, it's great. You know, as a fan of stealth diggers, you know, I started, I've only been doing it for a few years, uh, four years or so metal detecting, but <clears throat> when I started getting into watching metal, uh, YouTube videos for inspiration and motivation, stealth diggers definitely was not number one top of the list, uh, watching the cool videos and what made them so cool. And I'm sure you hear this a lot is the combination of the different personalities. You know what I mean? And it's so distinct. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. that there's all these different personalities and, um, so, I mean, you must have been thrilled going from a coin shooter to being able to get out some of these old, old properties. I mean, that uh, the stuff you've found over the years that I've been watching that I know of uh, has just been pretty, pretty amazing. Do you? Uh, yeah, I mean, that all evolved pretty much at that point when I met Charlie. Because uh, I brought him to a, a still standing 1700s house. And uh, we, we basically pulled up silver Indian heads and, and everything. And then uh, uh, Charlie told me what he really wanted to get done and everything. I said, I'm hip with that because I'm, I'm done. <coughs> I, I'm, I'm done doing just coin shooting. <coughs> How'd you feel? What'd you think about when the show started to take off? Because there definitely was a point where things really started to happen and things really started getting popular. Right. <coughs> Excuse uh, me. Uh, just to see that evolve it was something else um, from like, I don't know. It was under eh, maybe around a thousand uh, viewers and uh, the, the subscription just went through the roof. A lot of the videos got thousands of views. It's, yeah, it seemed like within a year, it really just exploded. When I go back and look at the history, boy, there was one year that it just took off. It was crazy. Well, yeah. we were rewriting metal detecting videos. <coughs> Before that, it was the same old thing. You'd see, you'd see a coil go back and forth. You'd see two hands and show... And, and that, that was it for a long time. Yeah, I mean, I don't know any other metal detecting videos that started with Thunder Chief ripping off a machine gun <laughs> into the woods. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? There, it was there's well, not too many of those. <laughs> well, you know, being in the glorious state of New Hampshire of uh, live free and die, we have our gun rights firmly in place. That's right. So Amen. we're able to able to do. This. Yeah. Hey, I was looking back at the, the the chat here. Finders Keepers asked, uh, how long did it take you to grow that stash? Uh, this is, uh, uh, a, year, a little over a year. About a year. Yeah. yeah. I was looking through a chat. Some new people have showed up here. Treasures of Texas, welcome. Thanks for showing up. Um, hey, if you're just joining us, this is Digger Spotlight. I'm DK with Adventures in Dirt. We're on live here with Henry Moore, Keebler, Keebs, Mr. Keebler. You know, you know him probably by a few different names, but uh, uh, he's been gracious enough to come on here as our guest tonight. And I just wanted to thank him for that. Unknown Detecting, how you doing, Beth? Good to see you. Uh, let me see what else we show. Uh, how many other people showed up here? Um, bum, bum, bum. Marty's nuts about digging. Good to see you. Thanks for showing up. Marty Verstall, Bill K. Hee haw. Hey, great to see you, man. <clears throat> so, uh, what, um, you know, of all the metal detectors you've had in the past, we'll talk about what you're using these days, but of all the metal detectors you've had in the past, do you have any one that you, maybe you've gotten rid of that you wish you hadn't, that you kind of wish you still had today? Um, well, Yeah, you know, probably my Explorer, my Explorer 2. Who, who made that? Mind Lab. Mind Lab Explorer 2? Yeah, yeah, I wasn't familiar with it. it. Yeah, uh, basically it was the model just before the E-Track. Okay. Basically the same machine. Yeah. And I would uh, use Mind Lab all the time. Because they were good coin shooters. Yeah, and it's uh, did you have to? Did you sell that, or did you get rid of it? To uh, did it uh, just break down on my, you? I gave it to my eldest son. He's using it now. Yeah. Yeah. 
Awesome. Do, 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 do your, um, do any other members of your family go out and detect with you? Yeah. In the videos, you can see, uh, uh my daughter, Ivy. Uh, I have seven children. <laughs> Excellent. So, so, uh, you've seen my daughter, Ivy in a couple of videos, uh, keep on who is my son, Kyle and Timothy, Tim, my other son. Uh, you've seen my grandchildren. How many? Uh, How many you got? I have three grandchildren. All right. And there's uh, Ben Cameron has gone out on hunts with us. Yeah. And who else? Uh, my other son of the same name, Henry. Yeah. That's that's fun when you can do that. I got six children of my own, and uh, only about one of them has any interest in <laughs> coming out with me and, and getting in the field. And uh, but sure is a lot of fun. But I also have four grandchildren, but they're little babies right now. And maybe someday uh, they'll uh, they'll have more interest in it than my kids do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, granted, I can't get them out every day like I like I tend to want to get out. Yeah. But uh, every so often now. Right. Right. So you mind talking about what you do for a living? Um, like uh, you talked about uh, in some of the some of the videos, you had mentioned something to do with lighting. <clears throat> well, li lighting is just a small part of the business. Mm -hmm. the The major part of the business is I own a sound company, ah. and that could entail anything from doing theater work, uh, doing concerts, or every four years. Every presidential hopeful comes through New Hampshire, and I see them all. Is that right? <laughs> oh, believe me, I see all the dirt, everything oh, behind the scenes. Oh. You have to write a book. You know, surprisingly, I, I'm in the process of writing two different books. Oh, yeah. One about my sound <clears throat> life and my other life of being on YouTube in the salt diggers. Wow. That's going to be an interesting so I, book. Yeah, I have a, a couple chapters, but I have to do synops uh, and send them into publishing just to see if, if it's worth it. I'm pretty sure it's worth it. Both of them are are in need. Those are books that are in need. Yeah. Yeah, great. <clears throat> what uh, Have you had any real unique uh, experiences with your sound and your lighting uh, company as far as uh, – uh, Shocking moments, would you say? <clears throat> uh, well, we were, really we, we were talking. I mean, we were it, talking. It, yeah, we were talking earlier about best laid plans don't always go so well. <laughs> yeah, the uh, they're not so much. I mean, maybe to somebody new in the business, it would be shocking. But I, I've I've literally met hundreds of very famous people. Uh, be them uh, rock stars uh, or presidents, presidents to be, so on and so forth. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah that's be interesting. I definitely look forward to that book that comes out. Somebody was asking in chat, uh, or not, somebody mentioned in the chat actually, Unknown Detecting uh, said that she's learning the ukulele thanks to, uh, <laughs> yes, thanks to SD. So, she can play so yeah so she can play with you all this year that's awesome how all right yeah how cool is that uh, ukulele i mean that kind of is a segue into your ukulele playing you've uh you've played on the show before on the stealth digger show before and then you know i discovered your youtube channel mr keebler um that you do a lot of your own music there uh some cover tunes and uh, lately, you've yeah. been having a lot of guest singers with you and, and showcase. Why don't you talk a little bit about that YouTube channel? Well, let's, let's talk about your ukulele playing. Where'd that interest come from? Um, really out of nowhere. I, I, I've played music, gosh, since I was like nine. The guitar, piano, and everything. And I went to college to be a, a music teacher. I've never taught a day in my life. I just went out. I just went out and played. Yeah. After that, um, it was uh, back then. It was uh, really feasible to make a good living playing out. Yeah. And uh, but that's not the case so much anymore. That's why I'm now in the production part of the music business. Yeah. Well, I enjoy it. I know I, I watch uh, every time you release a new video. I try to catch it and. Um, 
Uh, it's been uh, it's been fun to watch. It's been fun to watch you you pluck that thing. I one of my cousins used to play ukulele, and um, uh, I never picked it up. I play guitar, but I never just tried to switch over to the ukulele. So uh, maybe someday, maybe you're going to inspire me someday to <laughs> pick up that thing and figure out where to put my fingers. <laughs> oh, it's one of the easiest instruments to play. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> what's the uh, what's the switchover like from guitar to ukulele? Um, if you can play guitar, you can play ukulele the same day you pick it up. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. It's, it's that easy. Um, though I did realize after about a year of playing strictly ukulele, I went back to guitar. And it seemed like my hand shrunk. I was yeah. like, oh, I got ukulele hands. <laughs> I bet. I bet it felt like a monster neck. <laughs> Once you're wrapped yeah. around that ukulele. So tell me about Mr. Keebler, your YouTube channel, and everyone, the link's going to be down below to uh, Henry's YouTube channel, Mr. Keebler. Uh, tell, how'd, that, how'd that start up? Is that just something you said, hey, you know what, I should just start putting this stuff out? Um, well, I can back way up. Uh, when I first started going out with Charlie, uh, metal detecting, I was, I said, well, gee, I, I should have a, a YouTube channel so I can at least answer people in the comments. So I, I started a channel, Mr. Keebler, and I think, and if you look way back at, uh, there's like, I don't know, at least 200 videos. The first one that was up there was just my fish bowl with the fish <laughs> <laughs> for like three minutes. And I, I got like, I don't know, 800 views and all kinds of comments. And it was, I just left it at that for a year or so. Yeah. And then uh, I started putting on things of interest and everything. And, and then uh, I found out, we think the, the metal detecting community is huge. The ukulele community worldwide is 10 times bigger. Is that right? So, yeah. And, and so I... Uh, I just started playing the ukulele uh, videos and I haven't stopped. Yeah. It's really, it's a fun thing. And I have many friends from around the world. With it. <clears throat> yeah. That, I can imagine it that that's so, I don't, I didn't know that. I didn't know it was so huge, but uh, yeah, I know a lot of mainstream musicians have, you know, touched on it, you know, over the years and, there's been you seem to you seem to hear ukulele music making it more into the mainstream than maybe ever before, and it's probably because of that worldwide community you're talking about. You know, there's a demand yep. for it. So, yeah. so as you started putting videos out on that channel, um, how long ago did you start bringing in guest accompaniments, uh, accompanists, and like guest singers and stuff like that? Uh quite a while back, but they were sparse. You know sparsely in between i've uh i found many more people around my area that uh either like to sing drum play bass you know it's it's a cool thing yeah. uh yeah it's uh when you find people like of like-mindedness and stuff i watch a uh, there's another channel i watch of a of a band called scary pockets and scary, scary pocket you had to check it out sometime they uh they, they bring in guest singers uh all kinds of different singers and they do cover tunes and they nail it they absolutely nail it um wow. i think actually the guy that runs scary pockets is the guy that founded um uh, what's the thing called um what's the thing called that youtubers do where you belong to kind of a special membership um, Patreon. Patreon. Sorry, there you go. Patreon. Yeah. He started Patreon, and uh, he's in this band, ah. and, and they just put tons of of edit, uh, just beautiful sound and music together, very professionally done, uh, very similar to sort of like uh, uh, Daryl's Daryl's Garage or Daryl's House, you know, uh, something, oh, yeah. something yeah. like that. Except they bring in these these uh, unknown kind of singers that are just wonderful. So if you get a chance, check it out. Scary Pockets. Uh, scary pockets. Scary pockets. Yep. <clears throat> All right. So, fifty two eighty adventures uh, wants to jump into the story of how did the sum squatch come come about? Where did the story of the sum squatch come about? Bigfoot is real. 
Uh, we're out in the woods. We hear things all the time. It could be anything. It could be a chipmunk or the white devil <laughs> or or a, a moose. And we always write it off as Bigfoot. Yeah. Yeah. So as you, uh, any other encounters besides the sounds and the squeaks and the noises? Any tracks, any, uh, any hair or fur or anything like that? There was this one time. Charlie and I were walking down this this path through the woods and about a 60-foot tree fell over 20 feet behind us. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So I, I'm pretty sure he pushed it over trying to kill us. <laughs> yeah, that's, that would be pretty scary. That, uh, that had to be pretty shocking so close to it you was. in the timing it of was. it all. I know if we were a little bit slower or, you know, too bad we didn't have the camera rolling at that time because, <laughs> gosh, that was a quite an experience. And it does make a sound when it falls in the forest. <laughs> Just in case anybody is wondering. <laughs> yeah, huge sound. So I don't know what this is, but uh, Unknown Detecting wants to know, when is Keeves going to get a suspension box? What's a suspension box? Um. One of the viewers has been sending up uh, these sealed wooden boxes that uh, whatever our bu top of our bucket list is for finding things, we get to open it. Oh, oh, so that's uh, oh, so I'm, like, I'm, uh, I've had to, I've missed that. <clears throat> oh yeah, uh, Charlie's is a copper. I'm, I'm sorry, a, a, a Spanish silver. Uh, Jen is a heel plate. Mine's a little rough, though. What is it? And uh, mine? Yes. It's it's a little it's a little rough. To, I, I'm probably not going to find it, but boy, I would sure love to find it. It's an old colonial weather vane. Oh yeah, you mentioned that. Um, yeah. Wow. So what were they made? What were they comprised of back then? Were they just arrows, or were uh, they all kinds of things? It, it depends on the wealth of the person. It could be an arrow with uh, knowing where the north was. Yeah. Or or it could have been uh, anything like a big horse on top of the arrow, all points showing. I would just love to buy it. They got, it's got to be out there. <laughs> it's got to be out there. You, you you would hope. You would think. <laughs> yeah. Or, or par, parts of one. Yeah. So, um, so that's currently on the top of your bucket list. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> what about um, what about fines? What do you what do you list? Cause, um, so when you started um, when you started metal detecting, was there a certain and and, and not not for the landmines, but for uh, when you started coin shooting, was there a certain fine that you found that you just went, oh boy, I'm hooked at this point. Like this is going to be something that's really grabbed a hold of me. Uh you know, that first silver dollar. It's like, wow. And what was it? Do you remember? Was it a... Uh, a, a 34. A 34. 1934. Wow. I think so. No, tw uh, 20... It's, it's over there. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. can go get it. <laughs> uh, yeah, we might want to see that. That's pretty cool. Um, you still have yeah. it there? You still have it... All Do you keep most of your finds? Uh, yeah, uh, unless they're going to the local... Humane, uh, humane, uh, <laughs> the local uh, museums and historical societies. Yeah. You know. <clears throat> so do you have like a display case and all that stuff and a kind of a display area in your house to put them all or? Uh, no, not really. Uh, but everything's kind of cataloged and, and uh, marked by date. Yeah. Um, for just in case. Uh, we go into a, a town that doesn't have a historical society, but suddenly has one. Yeah. We're ready to give them a treasure trove of, of relics and coins and such. Yeah. I was going to ask you, I asked Charlie, um, so are you both pretty involved with local historical societies? Yes. Yeah. I, I go to a, I go to a meeting tomorrow night. That's a, a few towns over and, Charlie's actually on the board of his local town hmm. uh, society. Hmm. 
<clears throat> yeah, there, it's good to it's good to uh, it's good to get involved with with uh, with those folks. I'm sure they there's mutual benefit there. You know what I mean? I'm sure you learn a lot yeah. from them, a wealth of knowledge, and I'm sure they they love what they hear from you guys and some of the stuff you're finding. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it's, it's not like uh, we're, we're get, gathering information from them. Uh, we're actually giving them more information that they already than they already have. No, is that right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like we never knew there was homes up there. Or we never knew there was. You know, you guys discover so much. I mean, that's why I think most exactly. people, a lot of people, really like about your channel, uh, the ch mm. the Stealth Digger channel, is that it's about discovery and exploration. Just yep. as much as it is about treasure hunting and, and, and metal detecting, you know, right? Because so uh, uh, there's there's a no secret. Anywhere you go in New England, in any local town, there's hundred maybe cellar holes in any given town in New England, and uh, uh, historical societies know about them. We were able to show them and document sites that had never been documented before. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Have you guys have you guys sent out set out to try to go discover uh you know one area or one one site and actually stumble across something else where you're like, "Whoa, we had no idea that was going to be there." Does that happen fairly often? Uh yes. Yeah. Uh basically cuz what happens happened was uh, somebody would move to the area and it'd be uh, a gentleman or a few gentlemen they would they would put up temporary shelters for whatever it took two three years and they would build their homestead go back south into Massachusetts order grab the family and move them up here yeah and then they would just spread out from there right yeah. <clears throat> hey, um, <clears throat> let me see here. <clears throat> Charlie Harley wants to know, um, has metal detecting improved your well-being? Like, in other words, happier times, more friends. You know, how has metal detecting affected you in that realm? About meeting new people? Yeah, just in general. Like, would you say metal detecting being in your life has been a very positive thing? Oh, yes, with, without a doubt. Um, um, and also able to uh, to uh, shed positively on other people. <clears throat> yeah, so like you mean like, um, well, just through the whole YouTube thing, of course. I mean, the whole YouTube community is a pretty cool community. It's filled with you know, great bunch of people, either fellow YouTubers or even, you know, the people that watch these videos, uh, they all seem to be pre pretty supportive. Um, yeah. But, um, you know, it's, that's got to feel good to you that, you know, you're, you're providing that service and you're giving that kind of entertainment out to people. And it really is a yeah. source of motivation. I can I can tell you firsthand, and I'm sure most people in the chat would probably agree with me that whenever you're cooped up or you can't get out like me, I work a lot. I just really can't get out throughout the week very much at all. So the weekends are my only time to get out and, but I'll watch videos throughout the week and uh boy, it sure is motivation to just like, wow, look at, look what they're finding. Look what they're getting out and doing. I wish I could be there doing that, you know? So hats mm. off to you all for continued uh, inspiration and in doing that kind of stuff. Hey, I wanted to say hello to some people that joined us here. Uh, Jim Steele. Hello, Jim Steele. Great Grandma's Greenhouse. What's happening? Good to see you. Bob Dip. thank you for showing up. Um, yeah, some other people came in. Iffy Signals, Mike, good to see you. Wish me luck metal detecting. Did you see anybody pop in over there, Keebs? Uh, No, I think you got them. Uh, well, um, wow. Mar Marty? Marty Verstall, yeah, yeah, yep. And we had uh, Neil from Australia on earlier. Now we even, we have uh, people showing up from England. I want to say hello to Huntress Kimmy, Claude Hopper, Scott, uh, whichever one of you are on or both of you. Hey, good to see you guys. Uh, saw you earlier on a stream I was on earlier, chatting with you. Uh, it's got to be early in the morning for you over there, boy. Thanks for uh, coming and showing up and checking out the stream and saying hello to Keebs. Appreciate it. 
And if you guys have any questions, make sure you're typing them in the chat room. And if you can just type Adventures in Dirt ahead of time, help me get it get get it highlighted for me so I can see it. We'll definitely ask Keebs your question. Absolutely no problem at all. <laughs> so what's your favorite part of metal detecting, Keebs? Like if you had to sum it up and you say, here's if you're in front of an elementary school and you're saying, here's why I like metal detecting, what do you think you would say? Well, you know, even a, it, it starts as a child. We all want the adventure. We all want that buried treasure. We want to be a pirate, you know? Arr. Um, arr, arr. 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 And uh, that's motivation. But the the real genesis is playing now. It's hard. To- <laughs> I'm sorry. I wish I knew what that was about, Henry. I'm yeah. sorry. Especially for a sound guy. It's probably driving you absolutely crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm um, sorry, buddy. But, you know, the, the, the really great reward is, is after looking back on the day that you found it and everything. Um, it, that's where it's at. Yeah. You, you can, yeah. Do you have any big memories that stand out in your head of certain hunts you've gone on with Charlie and the gang that really stand out in your head where you're like, man, that was just an epic, amazing, amazing hunt. I'll never forget that hunt. Uh, probably the time we found the dead guy. All right, tell the story for people that might not be familiar with that. Tell that story. Uh, well, uh, Charlie had gone ahead to look at another hole. I was at a hole, and I was going to go up to meet him. Out the corner of my eye, I see a hunter's vest in the woods. I went, oh, got to be careful. And he's like, wait a minute, it's not even hunting season. And this is on a loop. Uh, I got John Philip Sousa now again. Is it a playlist and, of uh, yours? Do you have a playlist on your phone or something like that? No. Huh. I, I, that's just weird. Anyways, um, and it didn't move. And I'm looking and looking. And I finally see the whole silhouette. It looks like a dead guy le- leant up against the tree. Like maybe a hunter last deer season was up in a tree, fell out, broke both of his legs. And just went up there along the tree and eventually died. So I called Charlie down on the radio and he's looking at it and said, oh, my God, you're right. You know, and it took us probably 15 minutes to walk <laughs> just into the woods a little bit. And as we kept getting closer, the more real it looked. And it was definitely a dead guy <laughs> went up against the tree. We finally get within 15 feet and we realize it's a uh, it's a prop for a hunter, so that they they know that uh, the deer will recognize that. Become all comfortable. Long. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they'll go out there, kick it over, and sit there and wait for the deer to come by. <laughs> right. <laughs> but boy, I'll tell you, that was a uh, I was gonna quit. I was gonna quit metal detecting because I had found everything at that point. <laughs> that's awesome. Do you remember the name of the episode that that's in? People could Ooh. go look at that. Oh yeah, yeah. It's called. Uh... Uh, the hippies and the dead guy. <laughs> because uh, we had done a spoof on this. Uh, somebody had sent us something, and somebody sent me patchouli. And because uh, I'm always like uh, looking out for hippies, making sure there's none around. And. and uh, <laughs> I, I portrayed that I mistakenly thought it was hippie repellent and I put some out in the field knowing that the next day there was going to be a, a, a hippie concert. <laughs> so we drove by and there was a big concert. And like, oh my God, <laughs> was it repellent? It was, it, a, was, it was attractant. It was like, it was like female, it was like, a, what do they call the urine you put on yourself to attract it? It was a pheromones. <laughs> hippie pheromones yeah. in there. <laughs> oh man and, and it was so funny because uh we were right at the gate and there was a little kid there i was like yo is there any hippies in there and he goes there's more hippies in there that you can shake a stick at <laughs> Pretty funny. Yeah. hey here's a ukulele question coming in from bob yeah. dip and bob dip wants to know how extensive is the sound overdrive 
and warping setup for the electric ukulele. The say it again because I don't see it. How extensive is the sound overdrive and warping setup for the electric uke? Oh, uh, it's all it's all on it's all it's all with the amplifier. What what you're doing with it? Yeah, but uh, I can get some really rocking rocking sounds out of uh, a ukulele. Yeah, or play the. The cutest little ditty you'd ever heard. You know? <laughs> yeah. Do you uh, run any boxes? Do you run any uh, uh, effects boxes through? Uh, no, no, no. Just what's on the amp, which is usually reverb and tremolo. And Overdrive. Or the only box yeah. I have is I have a wah wah pedal. That's it. <laughs> have you? Oh, really? Have you? Uh, you got any videos with you playing uh, ukulele with the wah wah pedal? Uh, I can't remember seeing that. I'd love to see that, though, if you do have that. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> well, you, you probably wouldn't see it. It'd be from my waist up, but I, I'm actually doing it with my foot as yeah. I'm playing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just can't recall hearing it. It'd be uh, it'd be interesting to see it. Definitely uh, see that one. Um, it, I think Itchy Koo Park, that, that particular one, which is only uh, three videos back, I think, yeah. from present date. Yeah. Yeah, if everyone in chat, if you'd like to uh, see Henry's videos, if you're not familiar with them, I got a link to Mr. Keebler's YouTube channel right down below. Uh, you know, feel free to check on that. If you're watching the replay, feel free to go check out his channel. Become a subscriber, become a fan, and check out his music. It's always a lot of fun to watch. And also links down below to the Stealth Diggers, of course, uh, where you can head over there and see him in many, many of the videos over there. Uh, boy, the Stealth Diggers have just kind of grown over the years, though, Henry, haven't they? I mean, it used to start, it was a pretty small group and quickly grew into a little bit of a larger group. And now it's a pretty pretty, pretty good group of people that uh, come along, come around every now and then. Oh, yeah, yeah. At, at times, uh, especially when, uh, uh, when uh, oh, the people from your home state come and visit every year. Yeah, right. Bill we and, uh, have a yeah. Few, we usually have a huge uh, turnout that particular week. Uh, we'll have a, oh boy, maybe two years. Was it two years this year? It can be as many as 50 people. It was uh, wow. amazing. That's pretty incredible. It's incredible. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> be, be, you know, uh, Cliff and Bill, they come out, but uh, he, Bill always comes out on his birthday week. So I'll tell you, I was watching the one episode when Bill came out, when he unpacked his vest. <laughs> Remember that? Oh, yeah. Oh, that was amazing. He, he lost like 20 pounds when he pulled all that stuff out of his vest. I couldn't believe how yeah. much stuff he had in his vest. That was incredible. <laughs> uh, Quite hey, a lot. Yeah. Finders Keepers wants to know, does Keebler think there's still plenty in the ground to find? He found it all oh, earlier. Yeah. I talked. I talked to Keeves about that earlier. He found it all <laughs> back in the '80s. I tell you. So, do you? Do you really think there's still quite a bit in the ground for us uh, detectorists to find? Yes, without a doubt. Because uh, I've had it explained to me like this before. You have a piece of paper, right? Yeah. And you start with a pencil and you try to color in that whole piece of paper, right? Yeah. You're not going to do it. Yeah. And that's. You know, you're walking back and forth. It's just like doing a plot of land. You're walking back and forth. You're not going to cover every part. Yeah. It, we we go back to cellar holes three or four times and still pull out the same amount of stuff. Yeah. As the first time we were there. So. There's a uh, there's a local there's a local old restaurant here not too far from where I live and my local uh, treasure hunting club that I belong to. Um. <clears throat> They went out there. They got it closed down, but it's been popular and it's been around for a long time. And they got an opportunity to go out there and do some detecting on the property. And I'm telling you, uh, they pulled up probably about 190 coins that first trip out there. And I was just Ooh. talking to one of the gentlemen um, just this last weekend about it. And he said, you know, we've made three trips out there. And each time we go out there, we pull about the same amount of coins out of there. So you're absolutely yep. right. You know, they don't grid it off. They don't, you know, go, you know, end to end, nose to end, nose to end. So every time yeah, and, they're, yeah. And even if you were to grid it off and, and cover every inch around here, our frost is terrible. 
that'll turn everything and, and move things underground. And if a coin was like this and you couldn't hear it the first time, next the next year it could easily have popped down so you can hit it. it so Yeah. It it's always gonna be there. Yeah, I agree. I mean I know that you know people get burned out and then they're finding just nothing but a bunch of pennies and stuff like that. But I think it's just, you know, making sure you're doing your research and making sure you're finding the old spots and, and getting permissions. I know that when we started getting door, doing door knocking and getting permissions on these, you know, private properties that maybe haven't been detected so much, boy, that just opens yeah. up all kinds of opportunities there. And then if you can get out in the mountains and you get permission to go out in the areas, um, how does that work for you? I mean, without giving too much information away, how does that work for you guys as far as gaining permission? Is it is it forestry area you guys go hunt in so that it's sort of pretty much open and accessible? Or do you have to uh, still find the landowner and go get uh, permission and all that stuff? Well, both. Uh, public land is public land uh, around here. Uh, if it's public land, you can go. Uh, but um, a lot the majority of the stuff is private that we go to. And I, I pretty much know everyone around here. I grew up here. So I know every farmer that, you know, and I have a good rapport with them and, um, uh, they, they all say yes. Yeah. Feel free. Give us some tips on, uh, gaining permission from a farmer that has a, some land, you know, I think a lot of them, a lot of times you know, they just don't, they start thinking about the liability and they're like, wow, what if you get hurt on my property? You know, I know there's a article here in Colorado that protects them if that happens, but um, give us some tips. What do you think are some tips to maybe getting some favorable permissions? Uh, you go in the middle of the night, you steal all their cows. <laughs> and after a couple of days, you bring them back and say, look what I found. And they go, oh. <laughs> Thank you so much here. Yeah. Go hunt my property. <laughs> All right, you heard it here, folks, on Digging <laughs> Digger Spotlight. You heard it here first. I'm going to put that in a book. Steal the yeah. towels. Steal their towels. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, become a rustler. <laughs> become a rustler, uh, right. Well, you know, around here, these are all third, fourth, fifth generation New Hampshireites. They pretty much know that, you know, a fellow New Hampshireite isn't going to go out there and fall in a well or anything. There's, you know, a few flatlanders who, like, think that way, that, no, you're going to get hurt. And, um, but other than that, nah. Yeah. It, we're a common sense folk around here. Yeah. Sounds like it. <clears throat> That's good. Yeah. Needs to be more more type of people like that out there. I think everyone in chat, yeah. let me know. Uh, type in your favorite tip for gaining favorable permission. If you got a tip for us, go ahead and throw it down in the chat room there and share it with us all. We definitely appreciate that. Uh, so, hey, uh, what are you swinging these days? What kind of machine are you currently swinging with? Uh, gosh, for the past ooh, four years, uh, the Deus XP Deus. Yeah, I think Tony of 5280 Adventures asked earlier, do you think you'll ever go off of that, off the dais? Uh, probably not. Um, gosh, it's a, well, somebody as old and as feeble as me, it's a, it's the lightest machine out there. Yeah. <clears throat> and you produce and you produce with it, so. Yeah. 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 It could be any machine as long as you know it. Yeah. I mean, everybody says that, and it's mm -hmm. true. Yeah, it is. You know, that's I heard that one time, and yeah, at least in my my small career in this, you know, hobby, uh, it's proved true to me. It's your best machine is the machine you learn to use well and 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 master, yep. and you really can, you know, me and my buddy Tony, he uses AT Pro, I use a, you know, a T2 or a, or a Fisher F70, and I'll go behind yep. him and find things. He'll go behind me and find things. It's just you know. You just learn your sounds and learn your tones and learn what it means yeah. and what it's telling you and yeah. uh, and have a good time with it. The one thing I do like about the dais is I can make it either act like a dais, I can make it act like a, a Garrett machine or a, a multi, uh, like, um, uh, like a mine lab. It's just a, 
a very versatile machine. Yeah, I've never used one. I've never, uh, I've never been with anybody in my group that's had one. Uh, interesting to try one sometime, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I want to say hello to some people that came in just uh, as they came in here a little bit later in the thing. Backcountry Diggers, I want to say hello to you and thank you for coming and showing up. Youper Digger 57. Youper, how are you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Oh, yeah, Youper. Yep. Tennessee Jim. Jim, great to yeah. see you, buddy. Thanks for showing up on the live stream, saying hello to Keebs. That's awesome. Uh, who else did I see here? Garnet Carmichael. That's right. Hey, Garnet, thanks for coming and saying hello, and thanks for the support of the channel. I appreciate it. Um, awesome. Hey, real quick, Henry, I want to, uh, I usually give a t-shirt away in, in the, one of my streams. We're coming up on, uh, just coming up on an hour here. So I want to do a quick little giveaway of one of my uh, Weekly Dirt t-shirts, if you don't mind, real quick. Go ahead. I'll uh, throw this up right there so people can see what the Weekly Dirt t-shirt looks like. Uh, black t-shirt's got a big old obnoxious logo across the chest. But hey, if you're interested in winning one of these t-shirts, we'll have a little contest here. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, everyone pick a number between one and a hundred. And I am going to, uh, have you enter that in. And I've already pre-selected a number. When I see it, I'll yell stop and that you'll be the winner of the shirt. So everyone, please one to 100. Watch this, Henry. The uh, chat's going to explode right. here. <clears throat> and, <20. laughs> between one and a hundred. Here we go. <clears throat> Still haven't seen it yet, but it's about ready wow. to explode. Yeah, now it's going to go quick. Still haven't yep. seen it. Still haven't 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 seen it. No, I better go back and make sure no one's... All right. Stop, stop, stop. I saw it. I saw it. Everyone stop. Everyone stop. I saw it here. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that is just amazing. I'm just checking back to make sure no one else had it first. Came kind of quit. The number was 21, 21, lucky number 21. The first person I saw that typed that in was Finders Keepers. Tony, um, my moderator over there, 5280 Adventures, if you can go back and double check to make sure I didn't miss anybody before Finders Keepers. But congratulations to Finders Keepers. You want yourself a Weekly Dirt t-shirt? Please email me or get a hold of me uh, various different ways. DK at AdventuresInDirt.com. Tony, if you put that email up, that would be great. Send me an email. Give me your address, shirt size, and I'll send you out a Weekly Dirt t-shirt. That would be awesome. Um, <clears throat> uh, let me see. Where's that slideshow? There we go. Yeah, so that's cool. I always give one of those shirts away during the show. For those of you that aren't familiar with the Weekly Dirt, it's a weekly series I put on every Sunday where I kind of pull in different channels and clips and highlights of what's going on this week. So if you're not familiar with that channel, I'll put a card somewhere up here during the playback and you guys can check it out and head over there and check out that playlist. That'd be awesome. The weekly dirt. You got to check that out. But Henry, so what's going on with you? What do you see as the future here in metal detecting? Just more of the same or are you, uh, are you like, where do you think metal detectors are going to go? I know the whole dual frequency thing now is huge. And uh, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, well, if, if nobody's ever, ever t told you this fact, <laughs> this song is, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, this fact, there, there is more coins in the ground that are in circulation right now. Did you know that fact? No. Yeah, so uh, it, it's going to be business as usual, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> and that's just coins. Uh, relics are going to be out there just as plentiful. Yeah. Yeah, like you were saying earlier, there's lots to find. I can't... Uh can't wait to get on some of it this year i haven't gone out too many too often myself this year only a couple times now and uh can't wait to uh get into it a lot more backcountry diggers wanted to know what do you think was your favorite find last year 2018 what do you think was your favorite find uh um a coin that was a uh, cut oh a cut coin cut yeah, it looked like a stop sign. They had cut it all the way around. 
um, just uh, randomly, or was it? Do you think it was marked like a like a, almost like a counter coin type thing, or no, no, it was just a cut squared and the, the shape of a stop sign. Yeah, but this thing was you know well before stop signs. <laughs> yeah, it was it was an old uh, large cent. Yeah, wow, that's pretty cool. I don't think I've ever seen one cut more than like once, you know, like that. Um, yeah. that'd be interesting to find out what the story is. I mean, that's what I like about metal detecting, right? Is trying to figure out what the stories are behind some of these things we find. Um, Always. Yeah. And backcountry diggers, to answer your other question, we answered a little earlier. Henry's, uh, top of his bucket list is an old weather vane, uh, from sort of colonial times. You really would like to find one of those. And, uh, boy, it's going to be amazing. I know you're gonna, you, you still, you stay after it. I know you're going to find it. That's for sure. Uh, yeah. yeah, I was looking in here. I thought somebody else come in. Yeah, Laura Kaban, good to see you. Excellent. Thanks for coming in. And hey, yeah, it was confirmed. Finder Keeper is the win- uh, winner of the shirt. So congratulations, Tony. If you throw up my email uh, email address in there for him to send me an email, it'd be great. Or you can just send me a comment on one of my videos, Finders Keepers. That would be awesome. Um, and let me know how to get a hold of you, and I'll send you an email. That'd be awesome. But. Um, uh, who else did I see come in? I saw a new, oh, Metallic Archaeology. I want to say hello to you. Uh, thanks for coming and watching the show and checking in with, uh, with Keebs. So, hey, man, I want to wish you a happy birthday, Keebs. You know, uh, um, I know you say it was your birthday coming up and you decided to spend it here with us, and I'm very honored that you yeah. did that. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Well. Any uh, final questions for Keebs here? And then, uh, I'm going to let him play himself out here in a minute. So if you got any final questions, please let me know. Type them up here in the chat room. Uh, we've been oh, on Tim. for just about an hour. Hi, Tim. Yeah. Who's in that? Uh, the Hitchhiker. The Hitchhiker. That's, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's Tim. Awesome. I'll have to check his channel out. I'm not familiar with that one. Uh, he's the guy that drums with me. Oh, is that right? Um, okay, yeah, I've seen yeah. those. I've seen those. Awesome. And he's also a spell digger. Uh Goes out hunting with us all the time. Yeah, yeah. I need to. Uh, I don't think I'm subbed to his channel, uh, so I'll definitely go check that one out. Uh, Mark the yeah. Berg Hunter, good to see you. Hey, man, thanks for coming along. Thanks for showing up. Uh, yeah, everyone wish Keebs a happy birthday in there. I wish we could all sing to you. I'm not going to sing to you direct because it's you already got enough bad at your music problems <laughs> happening in your ears, and uh, you don't need additional Bye. on top of that. Um Bye. <laughs> but hey you talked about maybe you had something you wanted to play yourself out here at the to kind of wind down the show uh we would love sure. to hear it if you would be willing to bless us with a small little tune here uh sure yeah. i'm gonna take these out though. sure that's okay <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. <laughs> Happy trails to you till we meet again. Happy trails to you smiling until then. Who cares about the weather? There's all that is true. Together, happy dreams to you. Till we meet. Yay! Woo! Woo! And the audience goes crazy. Hey, yeah. Henry, thanks so much for playing that for us. I appreciate it. If you'll do me a favor, you got any last parting words for the gang out here? Um, yeah, go for it. <laughs> Live full, die empty. Live full, die empty. That's pretty cool. Hey, I'm going to put you on the side for just a minute, close the show out, and I'll get with you real real quick here. So give me just one second. Everyone, okay. help me thank Keebs, Henry Moore for coming on and joining us for Digger Spotlight tonight. Thanks, Henry. I really appreciate you coming on. So give me one second. Give, give me one second here. Hey, wasn't yeah. that awesome? Amazing. Uh, Henry Moore, Keebs, Keebler, Mr. Keebler. Boy, man of many names, a man of many talents. 
uh, had some great information to share with us tonight. And I want to thank you for showing up here on Digger Spotlight and asking your questions. Hey, when I close this show out, I'm going to let the music play for about two minutes. You feel free to go ahead and finish up your conversations and exchange information. And I just want to wish everyone well. I've got another Digger Spotlight coming up pretty soon. I'll be announcing that pretty soon. But until we see each other again, I want to let each other know, let you know that uh, stay safe out there. Happy hunting to everyone. And have yourself a great time out there representing our hobby of metal detecting. I'm DK with Adventures in Dirt. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for being a part of the show tonight. I will catch you next time here on Digger Spotlight.